Hey guys, it's JMouse here. We just saw the story of the Outlands trailer live premiere, and we just also saw a new legend in it called Vantage and her abilities being used in that trailer. We also know that the next season now is called Hunted. Got all of that and much more in today's video, including a potential Newcastle buff for any of you that may or may not play him out there that are interested. So make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. And without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So first off, I'll be showing the trailer off in the background if you guys want to take a look at it and if you guys did not watch it. So first things first, we got to talk about this trailer, this new legend and her abilities, that being Vantage. And actually, a lot of people don't really seem to be happy because the first things first is that she is actually a recon legend. Now, we did expect this. Obviously, her abilities that were leaked seem to be a recon legend. We kind of already knew this. However, a lot of people are saying, look, we do not need more people who can scan survey beacons. I think the survey scan beacon is kind of getting out of hand, especially with everybody that seems to be able to have access to it. Also, I just feel the need to say that Pathfinder needs a new passive. Just throwing that out there. Anyhow, so Vantage will be a recon legend she will be able to scan survey beacons but one of her abilities is going to be a tactical ability called the echo launch and basically this allows you to launch towards your winged companion so there's a winged companion that she has called echo and then order echo by tapping q and launch to echo by holding q as you can tell it's a little much you can obviously launch towards this echo send this echo wherever move the echo and then launch to it again i don't really know if there's like going to be a limit on these but i know that there were a couple players in the comment section of the live stream that were a little concerned she may be a little bit overpowered obviously she's going to allow her teammates to do extra damage on a person if she hits them with a the sniper the sniper does a little bit of damage she could throw out this echo and then launch to him like a newcastle i guess kind of would be then obviously you can scan survey beacon so there's a lot going on advantage i think she might be a pretty good legend if you're actually able to be good with her i think players do have the right to be a little bit concerned because obviously like i said it is a lot but i don't really think i'm ready to call her overpowered quite yet i mean we've never even seen her be played really her ultimate we obviously saw in the trailer she has a sniper rifle she can pull it out when she hits an enemy with it it does 20 damage and it also does i believe 15 percent more damage for her teammates that decide to inflict damage on that person as well kind of confusing i feel like it's a little bit too much of like you know all these different abilities or all these different types of workarounds with this however regardless it is pretty cool to have a sniper rifle that does somewhat of damage as an ultimate ability i believe it only has a couple of shots though so it's not like a craver not like something you have a bunch of ammo with but also her passive ability apparently is going to be i guess pretty similar to seer how you can aim down sight and get a bunch of information now the release date for this new season should be august the 9th so it's only going to be a couple more weeks honestly until we get our hands on a new season honestly it's kind of hard to believe that this season has flown by although i'm pretty glad because i did put out this poll yesterday regarding season 13 and asking the community do you guys believe that this is by far the worst season in apex that we've ever had and a lot of the community members had something to say 53 percent of you said yes this is in fact the worst season of apex that we've ever had 47 percent no and i'm sure that a lot of those were season six probably a lot of issues that we had in season nine even though that was probably more of a hype season that we did have regardless a lot of people do believe though that this is probably the worst state of the game we've ever been in apex right now with all the bugs the glitches so it is good to see that a new season is right around the corner just a couple of weeks away and hopefully things will go up from here now obviously i'm not going to say that this is the one this is the one we've all been waiting for this is going to change things forever because we say that all the time and a lot of times it leads to disappointment but i will say theoretically it's got to be better than this current season we got new game modes coming a new legend coming things should theoretically be better and i think a new gun coming in the nemesis burst ar so you just cannot go wrong with the season skull town apparently is coming back so i mean this there's no way it's worse than this one also we got to talk about some legend buffs and nerfs that could potentially be coming to the game and this is actually tying back into the algs world championship controversy that we saw with seer now seer apparently to a lot of people was not very good at all it's completely useless according to asu unless you had a complete like specific niche that you needed to fill and most teams just didn't have it so therefore asu said that seer was actually very useless and so it's kind of crazy to see because now you see all these people using seer his pick rate has actually gone up very high considering that people saw how well he was being used in the algs well newcastle also was being very well used by 100 thieves you would think maybe his pick rate would go up maybe he does not need a buff as well well it doesn't look to be that way as newcastle has actually topped crypto now and is the least liked legend to be picked i showed this yesterday it was actually down 10 percent in the newcastle pick rate i guess because obviously he was up so much from when he was first released and people stopped using him pretty quickly because they realized maybe he's not the strongest legend especially in public matches so crypto is now at 1.7 percent newcastle now at 1.6 percent and people are starting to wonder does this constitute 
for a new castle buff is the pick rate enough i know we always talk about it respawn looks at the pick rates too much maybe they need to stop doing that because they're just buffing legends that maybe not need to be buffed some legends are more you know ranked based and that's why they're not very well picked because in pubs they're just not very practical or at least not very fun crypto is a great example of that he's a great legend for ranked, but no one wants to play that kind of legend in pubs so it makes total sense well now because respawn seems to be focusing on these pick rates so much it looks like maybe potentially we could see a new castle buff zexerto put this out and they said apex legends pick rates force players to demand for a new castle buff so unfortunately all the little timmies that do not understand how ranked works and do not understand that pick rates are not good enough for a buff they're actually pushing for a new castle buff because of these low pick rates and essentially i'm guessing they got to be doing the same thing with crypto as well now i still stand by my decision i think pathfinder is the one who really needs a buff at least a passive at least something else i know that john larson the game balancer did say that he's always looking for ways to add pathfinder a new passive and basically you know try to be fair with path because obviously the love for path is always there people love pathfinder but it's just hard to gauge what is the right way to go about it without it being like a correlation of a direct buff so i'm not really sure what they're going to do if they ever will do it hopefully path will get some justice very very soon but i'm interested to see what you guys have to say about the nerfs and buffs down in the comment section below and let me know which legend you think needs to be nerfed what legend you think needs to be buffed as we approach the season 14. Now, also in the news i'm actually really glad to see the apex fans do this this is actually making me proud because we always focus on the cheaters the hackers the people that are using aimbot the people that are using wall hacks and the people that are targeting pros and apex predator matches right but we don't really address the situation of the strike packs very often we just say oh it's unfortunate people got them there's not really much we could do well players are actually now starting to turn their focus not only necessarily the cheaters that we are seeing that are blatantly cheating but now the people that are using strike packs in their game so if you guys are not familiar with strike packs the best way i can put it is anti-recoil and people are saying look they're buying these little things from walmart if you guys don't remember walmart actually tagged somebody with a link of where to buy the strike pack because i guess that was a keyword and an automated response someone was looking for one and they just literally said hey here you go here's the link here's the strike pack you know go buy it up i just thought it was crazy to see walmart actually promoting that on their twitter page and however players are now saying look we got to gauge this anti cheat towards strike packs as well we've got to find a way to be anti auto recoil control so that we can get rid of the strike packers and call it a cheat because it is a cheat i mean it is using basically cheats so this is what Dexerto put on their article regarding this situation they said it's actually coming from a reddit post from bluco who said when will strike packs be a bannable offense and attached was a clip showing an enemy believed to be using a strike pack cheat apex legends players appear to be encountering more and more similar to macros of terms of how do they function strike packs are attached to a controller and mimic inputs to give in-game boosts like removing recoil completely in the clip of the player highlighted the alleged cheater is firing at full speed albeit single fire so experience experiencing no recoil however unlike macros they are harder for anti-cheat systems to detect as you guys can see this clip i'll let you watch it let me know what you think go ahead and roll the clip So I'm very interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below of how can we actually fight off strike packs and cheats in general what is the best way to go about it is it simply just you know hey expand your anti-cheat make the anti-cheat better obviously we know that hideouts did leak out basically during a controversy with his watson saying hey we are working on something with the anti-cheat there is something in the works there's something that we're working on hopefully it will be enough to attack something as widespread as the strike pack so i'm not very sure let me know what your best thoughts and ideas are down in the comment section below honestly i would like to take the approach of trolling cheaters instead of just instantly banning them that's what they want they want to be instantly banned so they just go make a new account get right back into it i would rather not ban them and just like lock their gun or something so they get frustrated and it wastes their time i don't know if that's really going to be super effective but i think it would be more effective than banning them because then they could just get right back into the game with a new account so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy and subscribe to the channel if you're new as always and until the next time take care of yourselves i'll see you later gators